But yeah, yeah. So we so we go to there's a there's been a car accident and fast rapper guy is going to rap me, 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 fast me, 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 guy, me, me, me. that guy <laughs> is going to he's going to show us his stuff and at first you're like, "Oh wow, this guy can fucking rap." And then you're like, Oh wait, no! I'm watching this on one and a half speed. I'm sorry. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> I, I literally have at one point in my notes, guys. Don't watch on one and a half speed. You'll think they're good at rap. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or the pillars of the universe will collapse. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah, or as this movie would say, I, I am, I am, I am, I am, fa, 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 fantastic. <laughs> do you need to do that 12 more times and fade out? Or In my head, as I was doing that bit, I was like, if I'm really committed to this, I will do this for seven minutes while Kara waits to be introduced. <laughs> All right, I had to cut it out anyway, so the end result is the same. And sitting 2,400 miles to my west is the host of the Talk Nerdy podcast and science communicator extraordinaire, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, I sound slightly more excited today because we've delayed this by a day, so I've had a little bit of recovery time. <laughs> right, right, fair. So tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? I'm not 100% sure. The the movie. I was really hoping you would be a hundred percent sure. Yeah, it's at I, the top of the dock, Kara. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if I should call it a movie because it's not a movie. It was just right. like a. It was like a home video of a stage show mm -hmm. called Exclamation Point Hero. How does one <laughs> say that? Hero. Like yeah, you, you get excited, excited before and then you, you speak. Stick, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hero. <laughs> like that. Exactly. Hero. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And Eli, how bad was ah Hero? <laughs> Well, if you love musicals, no, no, you will not like this movie. Sorry. Well, it's a, so hold on. We, so, Kara, you sing. Eli, you sing. I sing. If you're not being real particular about shit like key, so uh, you guys, you guys want to do the rest of this as a musical? The rest of this episode? Finally, oh yes. God. Oh, this is the offer I've been second most anticipating for you to make. No illusions. I am ready. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm I don't want to do it anymore. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I feel like so far and this is kind of a, a big bar. But granted, I only see one fourth, mm -hmm. one fifth of the films and only after a certain point in time. I would say that this is maybe the best worst racist attempt at anti-racism. Ooh. Okay, because you haven't seen Brother White. So yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> so was Brother White trying to be, because I feel like this movie was trying to be anti-racist and they were so racist in their anti-racism. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that was fantastic. <laughs> I was going to go with best worst random projected images. So right. this is a stage show and apparently a high budget one. That's what it says on IMTB. <laughs> But there are these two screens, and I'm, I'm exaggerating. There, there are two sheets, white sheets in the background, and they're projecting images on them. And sometimes they're relevant to the story. Sometimes they're just telling you what is supposed to be happening. But sometimes it's just bafflingly weird, random shit. Yeah, it's a lot of stock, like, footage. Right. Yeah. And it's like, why are we watching black and white Olympics shit? It makes no <laughs> fucking sense now. Just a bunch of like public access stuff from the 19th. Right. Steamboat Willie starts to play in the back. Okay, you're just going through the catalog. Yeah, the best part was when they discovered that all of NASA's images are Creative Commons. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, oh, we can get some good quality stuff Hubble. up here now. Yeah. yeah. Let's get some high tech out here. Yeah. See, I was going to go with best worst unnecessary Jews. This, this might be the same as Karis. I'm not sure. So. <laughs> Podcast listener, this is the story of Jesus set in modern day, whenever the fuck this thing was made. So everyone's wearing jeans and T-shirts. And instead of the Sermon on the Mount, it's the Sermon on the Empire State Building. 
except for the Jews, yep. who are still dressed like fucking Roman era high priests of the Israeli temple. Yeah. So to whatever extent this movie was trying to be anti-racist, it was absolutely saying, but the Jews still killed Jesus, though. Oh, no change to the Jews. Yep. Oh, for sure. But they they weirdly made a distinction as if Jesus was not Jewish also. Right. Yeah. Like that was a, a weird oversight of theirs. And they were like, yes, it was very anti-Semitic. I think I made that note multiple times. But also Jesus is black in this mm-hmm. musical, yet they still lynch him. Oh, oh wow. yeah, we're yeah. going to get to that. We are going to get to that. I have a note about that for yeah. sure. So it's, mm, what, mm. yeah. Also, all the white people think they're black in this musical. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Sure do. A lot yeah. of uncomfortable yeah. cultural appropriation as well yeah. to look forward to. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got 31 songs with all in nine tunes between all of them <laughs> on the other side of this break. So we're going to make the most of it, but we'll be back in a flash with all the slapdash bullshit that is a ah, hero. Thanks for coming shopping with me, Kara. Eli, you came shopping with me by hiding in the backseat of my car. Potato, potato. Not how that phrase works. Ooh, are these wine glasses? I totally need these. Dude, Eli, you are already $500 above your budget. <sighs> okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. Jesus, Noah, where did you come from? Oh, I was in the uh, the trunk. I gotta admit, it's kind of irresponsible that you didn't check there after you found me. Kara. Right? Yeah, so I'm helping Eli with his budget. I'm keeping track of his expenses for him. So, you know, the usual. Which means he goes with me wherever I go. (sighs) Eli, if you want to keep track of your expenses in a smart way, why don't you just use Truebill? What's Truebill? Truebill's a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. It's true. I downloaded Truebill when they first became a sponsor and they canceled subscriptions I've been putting off getting rid of for years in less than a week. Save me a bunch of money. That's right. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Plus, they've got budgeting, financial insights, and monitoring built right into the app. They sure do. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. That's Truebill.com slash awful movies. All right. Good to know. So what do you say, Noah? Can I thank Kara by taking her to lunch today? Does the restaurant take rubles? Probably not. Then no. R- rubles? Uh, don't ask. Kara, are you aware of a financial term known as the bounce? <sighs> Never mind. All right, guys. Welcome to the first ever writers meeting for Hero the Rock Opera. Woo! Now, uh, this thing has got to be hip, cool, and really bring the story of our Lord and Savior to the modern day. Exactly, because like great universally true stories always require modernization to be relevant. Exactly. Right. So what if it was set in New York City? (gasps) Awesome. Totally. Like where in New York? Uh, So like all of the famous New York places, you know, like uh, Times Square and the the Empire State Building, um, Sparrow's Pizza. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, I go there every time I'm in an airport. Right, like how could you not? And um, of course, everyone will be dressed in what like all the cool people are wearing these days. Yeah, which is jeans. Sure, yep, jeans, the coolest clothes ever. Yeah, and instead of Romans, it's going to be like a futuristic company called Icon. Yeah, yeah, and there will be rap, lots of rap. Yeah, tons of rap. And the Jews... Uh, I, I think it's best that we not make any changes to the juice. I mean, how else will they know who to blame? No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's gotta get the point. message out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're gonna start off by setting the premise up here. Just we're gonna spell it out on the little projected screens, which is what if there wasn't a Jesus before and he showed up in the modern day? Right. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I really appreciate you taking notes at this point because my notes are two hours, Kara. That's right. Two hours <laughs> of this. <laughs> and like at this point, I'm realizing that this is a YouTube video, not a movie. Mm-hmm. That this is a, a home movie of a stage show in what I'm assuming is a mega church. Well, so. Right. Yeah. But to be clear, this was like, you know, they're, they're, this is like a five camera setup, like 
way over edited big credits at the end they sold this dvd blah blah oh, yeah. blah so you know it's not just somebody with the cell phone holding up in the in the back corner but yes i think this is like pre cell phone footage no, right like I, yeah because like what is modern day i grappled with this question a lot during this yeah. performance what what day is it really? It must be the 90s. Because at one point, a woman on stage is wearing arm bands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. So a little bit more exposition here via the projector screens. There is a evil worldwide government. They're called Icon. Because mm-hmm. uh-huh. of iconoclastic. And also, New York is riddled with, their words, not mine, Ethnic gangs and revolutionaries. Oh my God, they said that. Yep. Yep. Ethnic I don't remember them gangs. Saying. Also, of course, there's no churches because there was never a Jesus, but there are synagogues, or should I say, eh, synagogue. There's one synagogue in all of Brooklyn. Wait, but now I'm really confused because all of the Jew, well, not all of the Jewish people, but like the head rabbi guy is black, Jesus mm-hmm. is black, and all of the people who beat the shit out of everyone else are white. Yes. So what are the ethnic ethnic gangs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They just I don't even know if they know what that word means. <laughs> yeah. I think they were going for like a SAT score replacement thing, right? <laughs> Jews are to black people as Christians are to normal. <laughs> so <laughs> fuck. <laughs> And at this point, like, they're giving us all this exposition at the top. So I know the premise, yet I'm still lost for the first, I don't know, five scenes. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. So you guys are going to have to help me get through this because most of my notes for the first, like, five pages are, what is happening? Uh What am I watching? (laughs) I'm so lost. So, like, luckily, this is, like, I think our 103rd What If Jesus Was Born in the Modern Day movie. (laughs) So we should be able to help you out here. So we're going to open off uh, uh, up our cheap ass stage show in a cage that's made of black painted lumber <laughs> where a newsboy is going to expose it to us out loud. Now, he was an undercover agent for Icon. I wrote in my notes at this point. Honestly, if this turns out to be Kiss of the Spider Woman, but with Jesus, I am <laughs> fucking in. <laughs> And to be fair, you can't just throw around the word newsboy as if people know what that means. This is how you got me into watching this movie. (laughs) I thought this was like a Newsies movie. What's a newsboy? Kara, I protect you from so much of the insider knowledge on this podcast. (laughs) You've never met Carl the Pug of Pegacorn, the wool dasher, you know who has never come after you. And then you're like, oh, who are the newsboys? Yes, explain. Explain for the people who are just now starting to listen to God Awful Movies. What is a newsboy? Yeah, so that's a, that was a popular Christian band in the 90s, and it was made up entirely of, like, 38-year-old divorced dads. <laughs> so this this guy who is the, like, narrator mm-hmm. guy who's singing from behind bars at the beginning is also in a band because he is a terrible singer. Yeah. So this isn't all just the newsboys. They've brought together a number of Christian artists, but universally that what makes Christian artists Christian before their Christianity is their lack of talent, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Like that South Park episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This whole beginning rap of his, it's like the intro to a rap but they don't have anyone who can rap. Yes. So it's just that, right? It's like they heard the karaoke track behind a rap and they were like, well, we can do that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Go Jesus. We're friends now. Go (laughs) Jesus. You're awesome. He's bringing full Limp Biscuit vibes too. Yeah, There's absolutely. a strong yes. Limp Biscuit theme to this musical. He's got like a Mark Zuckerberg trying to do Limp Biscuit on karaoke <laughs> night kind of a feel, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. I just want to say I'm prouder of the listeners who knew who the newsboys are than I am of the listeners who knew who Limp Biscuit was. Well, I haven't seen him. So. <laughs> and so, and, and they, but also, we should point out that as he's doing his little rap about, you know, this is how it happened. He's also trying to dance, but they have him in this tiny little cage. So he can't really do any of these dancing in a fucking phone booth. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, what was he actually rapping about? He's He was rapping about the fact that the show was about to start, basically. He was rapping about <laughs> oh, the fact right, that yeah, he was going to tell us a story. Content. Yeah. Okay, I am okay. the narrator. Yep. Yeah, that's the, that the whole song. That's how, like, that really is the theme of this entire stage show is let's spend six minutes rapping about a transition. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and, and also let's not like, 
fuck it up with a whole bunch of lyrics, right? <laughs> this song is just him saying this is how it happened over and over. Like every single song. Like these songs are 93% coda. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, and this fades into another song wherein we're going to meet modern black Jesus who is going to be roping in his first couple of disciples. This is Peter and Judas, or as this movie cleverly renames them to make them more ma- modern day, Petrov and Jude. <laughs> Petrov, oh yeah. Guys, we need to modernize Peter Petrov. <laughs> I had no idea that's what was going on because all I could see was two guys fake playing cards. Yep. Like they yes. didn't have actual cards. They're playing a game of hand cards back and forth. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, they seem to think cards is shoving paper back and forth across the table as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, but with, without paper, like pantomiming, yes. shoving paper back and forth. And then there's a guy, but I guess now I know that this was Petrov, who's wearing a Confederate flag shirt. Yep. And I can't tell if this is just like casual racism or if it's part of a plot. It was, So that will be replaced by an American flag later. So you can see him becoming less of a rebel and more of a patriot. I don't know. Is that uh, what was happening? I thought it was just an unnecessary costume change like all the rest of them. That could be it too, yeah. The Confederate flag had me with lots of questions about this alternative timeline in which there was no Jesus, but there was a Confederate Yeah, right? <laughs> yes! I was wondering yes! about that myself. And then why did they... Wait, okay, at one point they there was a Mount Rushmore imagery in the back and a one-way sign. What does it mean? Random Americana shit with whatever else was left over in the fucking stock footage. It was so weird. <laughs> so it means nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It was they, It was like the song. The, the song was, I wrote in my notes, this is too platitudinous to be about anything. Yeah, what were they saying? I don't remember the content of the song. I just remember Petrov and Jude. This is my first exposure to to the character of this film that makes me the most uncomfortable. That's Is that Jude? Absolutely. Yes. yes. What a weirdo. Oh, shiny Heath Enright. Okay. Oh my God. He makes me so, he's like all of, it's like they were developing the character and they listed all of the traits of a, of a child molester. Yeah. And he also sneer sings the entire yes. time. Yeah. Like his, he's got like a turtle neck situation. He's always like kind of bent over yep. and like, like croon it like it's it's so uncomfortable and also his shirt says jude all over his like, shirt he, does say jude. and, yeah, and he will true. wear four different shirts that all say jude on them it's amazing <laughs> so i my theory is that this guy is the alternate universe heath enright right because he's short he like heath has a beard this guy doesn't this guy sings like every he's the opposite of heath in every way <laughs> oh well well that I, that means that that's not like a massive compliment to heath right it is i, I, I like because i acknowledge him when he's not on the show um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the redneck guy with the Confederate flag wants to follow Jesus and Jesus offers him spiritual rewards, much like, a, you know, your corporate fucking overlord offering you a pizza party. <laughs> <laughs> but the bald character, the Jude, he's like, hey, you know, this might be all right for me. So I also will follow Jesus. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at this point, Eli is starting to slowly lose his mind because of the jump cuts. Yes. Oh, my God. So this, <laughs> I, I was going to say, this is where we meet the main character of the movie, which is jump cuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Each camera shot in this fucking scene lasts a quarter of a second. <laughs> and as I've mentioned on other episodes, my iPad has an app installed Because one of my medications can cause seizures where it goes like, hey, you might have a seizure. Stop watching this. My (laughs) iPad and I broke up during this movie. (laughs) I literally had to uninstall the seizure app for later points of the movie. I had to be like, turn off. And it sent up a warning. It was like, you might fucking die. And I was like, I'm dying doing what I love. Seizure app. (laughs) Watching a newsboy pretend to be 46 year old Jesus. Let's do this thing. With his 38-year-old mother, yeah. (laughs) So, oh, speaking of which, so that's the next scene, right? We go to, according to the title cards, Williamsburg Private Home for a Jewish Wedding. What? Why? Okay, this... (laughs) Williams, I guess they're like, William, I heard a cool person once mention the word Williamsburg. That's where the Jews are, is why they came up with this. Yep. I see. But why why wouldn't it be Williamsburg 
event space. Right. Why are they having a wedding in a private home? Also, why is she wearing a wedding dress that looks like a high school play wasn't trying very hard? You know, there's so many questions. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> Alternate future, all wedding dress. So what we're to led to believe is that without Jesus, wedding dresses don't have fillings on their like <laughs> they're, they're just, just bird cages. Yeah, it's just like it's like a cage skirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also, okay, so this is where we meet this large gentleman in the Yankees jersey as well. Mm -hmm. right? He, oh, no, not him. So he's doing, he, he wants to do the fast rapping thing, right? He wants to break out in some super fast rhymes, but he doesn't have any super fast rhymes. So he's just going yibbity, 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 or something like that over and over again. No, this is what he does. And he does it four more <laughs> times does. throughout the film. You guys ready? <laughs> me, 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 yeah. me, 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 me. Right, me, 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 like me, he's me, me. about That's to, and you're expecting there to be a word that begins with that syllable that goes into <laughs> a fucking rap, and it never does. Nope. No, he it's just me, 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 me. <laughs> if at the end of this he had caught a torpedo that was heading for Jesus, I'd be like, oh, okay, this guy's character makes a lot more sense now. I get it. He has a braid too, a long braid. Did yeah. you guys notice yep. that? A very long break. <laughs> Bad he did. Also, and I love this so much, he does the whole clap your hands and the audience ignores him entirely. <laughs> oh, the audience participation moments of this musical, because this was <laughs> shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. The audience participation moments of this musical are terrifying. I watched Spider-Man fall into a Broadway audience and die, <laughs> and it was way better than watching these people be like, everybody clap. No, on come on, not on one in three people. Come on. <laughs> so, Don't clap your hands. Hands in the air? Yeah, that'll do. Now, of course, the reason we're in this scene, though, is that we have to show Jesus doing his first miracle, right? He's got to do the wedding. He's got he's at the wedding, so he's got to turn water into wine. Uh. And because that is such a lame ass, petty fucking use of his superpowers, this movie has to acknowledge it with like because Mary, the fucking mother of Jesus, who is clearly younger than the actor playing Jesus, comes up and says, hey, you know, why don't you turn some of this water into wine? We're out of wine. And he has to be like. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I, I have yeah, I've got godlike superpowers and you want me to make wine with them? Mom, every time we get together with people, you make me do magic for everybody. And I wrote in my notes, <laughs> I get it, Jesus. I get it. <laughs> do you also notice that they, they clearly didn't do any research on what a Jewish wedding looks like because there are no Jewish wedding rituals? Nope. And no. The rabbi literally goes, can I get an amen? Like, oh, did he really? Happens. Yeah, he does. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like when I, I was in a high school play about the Holocaust, at least we had somebody step on a paper cup at some point. You know? <laughs> right, they right. Yeah. No, he didn't do any. It was just a Christian wedding with people wearing yarmulkes. That's yep. all it was. And then they, they also, so they have to do the water into wine trick. So they go for the stage trick version of this, which is just to, you know, put some fucking Kool-Aid at the bottom of the goddamn jug and then pour water into it. But that yeah. doesn't mix well if you don't know what you're doing. So. <laughs> it's just red goop rises up from the <laughs> yeah, bottom of this just, jar. It's just like, and the best part is they pour a, like a, a hefty glass for fucking, uh, Yankee Jersey yes. guy who's like, don't, don't make me drink that, man. <laughs> That's like half a cup of grenadine. Please do not make me drink that. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's Jesus doing this miracle. We get a quick scene of the Jews conspiring against them. Again, full, like, ancient temple dressed Jews in the middle of this modern rock opera. Just throwing that out there. Yep. Yeah, like lighting candles. Yeah. Doing doing Jewish things, like lighting candles. Yeah, right. So we're, <laughs> we're at this Brooklyn and, 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 and ominously lighting candles, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I realized that this movie, uh, musical, whatever, is full of unnecessary costume changes because Jesus has already changed his T-shirt by this point. Yep. And then I start realizing that all of the characters are constantly changing their clothes. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I'm only just now learning who these people are. Right. Kara, Kara, would you like to know why they're constantly changing their yes, clothes? Yes. yes. Because all of those T-shirts were for sale at the merch table. Oh, after my God. Are you serious? So... It will come later in this episode, but I will have a horrifying revelation in my notes later on about this merch. But yeah, I located genuinely every costume change for Jesus. When I Googled <laughs> Hero the Musical merch, I found every shirt he wears on stage. Yeah, because some of them are just the same shirt in a different color. 
Yep. <laughs> well, and not only that, but it's also part of their advertising, right? If you look at the advertising they were using at the time, they said, you know, the Broadway-esque musical that uses dozens of costume changes, et cetera, it, it, as, as like a selling point of like how professional. We brought a lot of T-shirts. Right. Yeah, that's not a... Co- oh, my God. Nope. <laughs> I can't. Nope. I can't. So, yeah. So, Jesus goes to the synagogue where they're ominously lighting candles. He tries to convince him that he's okay, that he's a good guy, but they beat him up to a fucking epilepsy trigger again. Right. Which, which again, my iPad was like, stop it. Stop watching this. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure what this scene was about. So, so the, the lyrics are, it's the fire of love. What does that mean? That's what Jesus is saying. And none of it means anything. It's like, none again, it it's too it. platitudinous to have meaning. Yeah. And then on the screens behind them, it says hometown crowds can be the worst. And then it shows Olympic torch relay footage. It sure does. For like a while. A, wh- a while. And also they forget or they don't care that Olympic torch carrying, as cool as it is symbolically, always looks super lame because you've got a distance runner being like, ow, ow, hot thing, hi, <laughs> ow. I got to keep the fire away from the rest of my body. So it's My usually arm just is someone, so goddamn tired now. Right, yeah. gingerly jogging while crowds try not to get too close. Yep. And, and okay, at this point, I, I feel like we have to grapple quickly with the concept of the lead of this musical. Because I, I just don't understand how a bunch of Christians wrote this and weren't like offended by their own writing. Like this is the part that I don't get. The god awful movie story. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like it's like it was really cool that they had a black Jesus, it, but then I'm realizing like, wouldn't they think that this was blasphemous? Yeah, I, I like I think there's a sort of a surface, like like you know like the, the as long as you're not being overtly racist you're proving how racist christianity isn't right right <laughs> wait what yeah yeah yeah. okay <laughs> yeah so so it's just like it's like no no because look at how many of our best friends are black you know it's it's one of those types of things yeah we even made jesus black right so there right exactly so it's okay that i don't support this law and bitch about affirmative action every time i see a black person with a job or whatever you know yeah and it's not like they used any of these social commentaries as, as like plot points. No, nope. it was just that Jesus was black, but also his nemesis is black. Like the two main characters of this entire thing are black. And it's it's the it's the protagonist and the antagonist. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and I think that was probably intentional, right? Because they didn't want anyone to think that this was a movie about white people persecuting black people or a show about that or trying to equate that with Jesus's persecution. Yeah. Except that it is because all of the main guy, the, the antagonist minions are white. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kara, you didn't get the program, but the program was all about black on black violence. It was just like a straight <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Talking point. Okay. I get it now. Ben I get Shapiro the Fox News tie-in. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we get, Jesus gets beat up at the synagogue. We get the Virgin Mary show up, right? His mom shows up and she sings about virginly birthing him and how she always knew he was going to grow up to get the shit kicked out of him at a synagogue. <laughs> oh, and she is by far the most talented oh, person. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. She's incredible. And everybody else is garbage mm-hmm. next to her. It's so upsetting. Every time this woman comes on stage, she just blows everyone else away. <laughs> yeah. They don't do anything. By the way, every time this woman sings, everyone else sits down and like has a fucking hamburger because they're like, <laughs> she's fucking great. Yeah. That's all <laughs> totally her. Are. Well, it's so bad for the fucking Jesus guy, right? Because they have to sing this duet, which is weird because it's like they're breaking up. It's a mother and a son, right? Oh, yeah. So it's like weirdly romantic, but they're supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, and they're good. the same age, so it's, it fucks it up even more. But like, he's just super duper average and she is an incredibly talented vocalist and yeah, I felt, yeah, yeah. To, to the point where i felt bad for a newsboy as weird as that was yeah <laughs> absolutely well i felt bad for me because at this point i realized that there are only 15 minutes yeah. that happened <laughs> 15 in a two-hour musical so then our fucking tour of the two boroughs continues in spanish harlem <laughs> where we catch back up with our, our undercover cop from the beginning right Oh, oh my God. I, they know so little about New York at this point. I expected a guy to come through selling Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatters. I just I, <laughs> like I, the, the the locations, the landmarks of New York that they come up with are so increasingly. I don't like I, I expected at a certain point for like one scene to start at yellow cab, you know, or yeah. 
<laughs> it was just fucking ridiculous. But yeah, he's rapping about being undercover to find out what Jesus is up to. And this is also where we introduce Mary Magdalene, but <laughs> we have to modernize her name too. So she's Mags. Okay. But so here's the problem. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Yep. And so you can see the moment as she walks out as all these Christian terrified writers were like, we'll put her in a skirt with jeans under it. Yes. <laughs> That's, she'll, that's she'll, probably what whores wear. Yeah, she'll licentiously show her shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so bad. And this is the point where I realized that, like, the people who made this were like, what if it was like rent, but instead of heroin, it's Jesus? Yes. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Like, that's what this is. Like, they were so desperately trying to be, to do rent, except that, like, the woman who plays Mary Magdalene is not Daphne Rubin Vega or Rosario Dawson. At <laughs> all. Oh, no. No. oh, no. At all. No. And also, they, 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 they keep running up against these awkward, it's the biblical story, so you have to tell this story thing, right? Because, like, dress it up all you want. What's happening here is Jesus is going, stop being a fucking whore. Right? Yep. Yeah. That's what he's yeah. doing. <laughs> Yeah. Also, they added to Mary Magdalene's story unnecessarily. One of the lyrics is like, I know your father had sex with yes, you. Yes, what but- the fuck was that doing there? <laughs> what? I'm like, hey, uh, hero, oh, Mark, hero, Um, that's not in the Bible. You did not need to add that. <laughs> also, the thing I was trying to set up is that, no, 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 I've been there your whole life helping out. Like, I was watching your parents abuse you sexually as a child. It's not a comforting thing to tell someone. <laughs> right. But don't worry, I'm going to kill myself to forgive you <laughs> for, having been, for that. Oh, my God. It's so bad. <sighs> but here's the thing. Mary does do like a little sexy dance at this point. I mean, look, it's not sexy, sexy, but she like moves her hips. Mm-hmm. And this is Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I got to play one of my favorite games I watch while I watch our Christian movies, which is how many sexual awakenings did this scene cause? <laughs> And of the people who suggested this movie, I can assure you, it was many yep. men, women, non-binary pals. <laughs> Lots of folks woke up at this moment. Uh, so, okay. So then we head over to Greenwich Village for a little miraculous healing. For no reason. Why is this in Greenwich Village? Oh, right. Because that's the other one they could come up with. <laughs> and also, so this, th- he's going to heal this homeless veteran who's supposed to be handicapped. He, he can't walk. And... They've got him on a fucking furniture dolly. Yeah, and and like he's got his legs tucked under, like he's full Lieutenant Dan. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like they're going for, it's like a really insulting representation of homelessness. He's basically like, they were like, let's dress him up like Oscar the Grouch. Yep. yep. And then and like, mm-hmm. and make him have no legs. Yeah. And then the song the whole time is about standing up. Right, getting up, getting using up your, own on your own two, two feet. feet. Yes. But he doesn't have feet, I didn't think. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like, they made him look like his, he had lower leg amputations. Yep. Right, but so here, but you're ignoring the most important part of this scene, I think, Kara, <laughs> which is the fact that furniture dollies don't have brakes on them. <laughs> so the entire time he's doing this bit about oh I'm a homeless crippled man and nobody will help me and blah 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 he's trying to stand still every time anyone moves on the stage his thing starts turning away from the audience yep. <laughs> just swinging around the stage it's, it's it's just like Leslie Nielsen in the back of a naked gun movie just like whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and then do you guys, did you catch when the, when the rabbi, I'm going to call him the rabbi, but who is he? Like the head of the Brooklyn synagogue, Yeah, Kai right? like is the, the rabbi. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I just had his him as evil Kai? Jew the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in my notes. Okay. So yeah, evil Jew, rabbi, whatever. He, he comes up and asks him, he asks Jesus if he has his healing permit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> Are you healing without a license? <laughs> in, a, in a world without Jesus, you need a healing permit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just picturing someone at one police plaza at the end of a really fucking long line, just like, oh my God, this is going to take forever. They said I could do it online and they'd mail it to me. <laughs> <sighs> but of course, so he eventually heals this homeless guy with, using nothing but his bootstrap speech rap. 
<laughs> this poor guy who has no boots. Everything about this yes. is so terrible. But the guy gets up and he starts dancing and everything. And he yeah, and, he grows legs. Yep. Jesus causes him to grow legs. Weird it's how that very miracle strange. doesn't happen now. But yeah, and then of course the guy yells, "What's up, Oklahoma?" Which was the funniest <laughs> moment of 2022 for me. I because I didn't oh. know where we were yet. But he, yeah, I was delighted. <laughs> oh, he, he tries to get this Oklahoman audience to dance, and you watch this <laughs> wacky character actor just just be like, "Okay, okay, we can't do tap touch. We can't do tap touch. Can everyone just jump? Can you? Nope, not, no, not okay. Wow, woof." Okay. <laughs> I'm out of movements. I'm out of move. Everyone stand up. Just stand up. We'll say you were out of your chairs. This is all I can do. <laughs> so, okay. So then we head back to that Brooklyn synagogue because they've only got so many title cards, damn it. <laughs> Kai the evil Jew is conspiring with the icon guy, right? The main icon government bad guy. Right. And it's really weird because it's like, this is when the anti-Semitic kind of stuff starts and I'm really well maybe not starts yeah, but like really gets <laughs> I wasn't gonna call you yeah, but yeah it's where it ramps up certainly yeah yeah and and like they have all the icon guys kind of dressed like Nazis kinda kinda which is a yeah. little weird yeah. so now you've got like the rabbi and like the Nazi like conspiring <laughs> against G- Jesus I don't know what's happening. Well, and it's so stupid because they have nothing to sing about at this point, right? These two characters, all they need to communicate is like, well, I need your help dealing with this Jesus problem. And he's like, the the icon guy has to be like, well, I don't want to help you with it. You deal with it yourself. And that's it. But they have to fill a whole fucking song up here. So they just start singing about how corrupt they are and about (laughs) how the Jewish guy only wants money. Just to be clear, you're bribing me. Yes, I'm bribing you. Yeah. (laughs) I am glad that you guys took notes on this scene because I was distracted at the two young ladies attempting to improvise Cirque du Soleil behind them. Oh, yeah, the they were amazing. They, they found two young ladies who had completed their very first gymnastics class and they were like, hey, we just have our actors in the foreground and you guys will fucking fake it for some Cirque du Soleil shit, right? And they were like, absolutely. Cartwheel, hug. P- patty, patty K. <laughs> <laughs> Different cartwheel. <laughs> also, I have to point out just how uninspired the rhyming is. And this, the, the last line of this song after the icon guy leaves is Kai, the evil Jew, realizing that he needs a spy. So he says that, that he sings the last line is perhaps what we need is a spy. Mm-hmm. It's the, both the plot point and the final line of the song. And it, he pauses for eight seconds between each syllable that isn't rhymed with anything. Nope. <laughs> think, just think of all the words that rhyme with fucking spy. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't come up with anything. Nope. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. The, at the very least, I think we have a full blown plot now. So I guess we can take a break. But we're back in a minute with even more. A hero. And then next time, we're going to have you watch this movie about a hospice nurse who won't stop telling her friend about Jesus while she dies. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Oh, it is. He sent me the preview. Oh, plus I found a bunch of crazy documentaries on this network, Gaia. I found an anti-psychology one I think will be really good for you. Oh, wait, one second. Potty break. Stupid cell phone. I'm sorry, what do you mean stupid cell phone? Oh, um, that's why I watch all these movies. It's not because you... Enjoy our company and have fun? Uh, no. Wait, well, I mean, that's part of it. It's just also when I was trying to get a new phone two years ago, Eli pretended to be a worker at the Verizon store and there was an indentured servitude clause in their contract. So, mm. yeah. You should have tried Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? Well, for people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. 15 bucks a month? Get out of town. Yeah, by going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. No sneaky contracts? No sneaky contracts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash awful. That's mintmobile.com slash awful. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash awful. Dang, I really wish I'd known about Mint Mobile. And I'm back. I was thinking while I was pooping, how would you feel about a crazy COVID documentary? 
bad? You got it. It's on the schedule. Okay. Two from now. My disciples, listen to me. On this very night, one of you will betray me. We would never. Okay. Who was it? Was it you, Simon? You two-named motherfucker. I will cut off your fucking ear, my dude. Peter, there is no need for violence. What's done is done. It is and was God's will. Yeah, God's will. Shit. Hey, everyone, help me barricade the door. Thomas, I want you to grab a wine bottle and I want you to stuff a rag into it. I'm not saying we're not going out, but we are taking some bitches with us if we do. Um, I... I, I don't think... Oh, my God. Is- Dude, give me your napkin. We do not have time for this. Paul, Paul, will you go into the kitchen and see if they have knives? Why am I the only one taking this seriously, Peter, you guys? Peter, Peter, may I speak to you for a second? Yeah, what's up, J-Dog? Look, I really appreciate your loyalty, but this is kind of a, a big Destin Messiah thing. It's my, it's my whole thing. I'm not really looking to get out of it. Oh, okay. So it's... It's like a trap. We want them to catch you. Well, it's kind of like that, sure. And that's when I slice off their fucking ear, you, right? You, it's because they caught you. Maybe I shouldn't build the church on the rock after all. Please don't. He's got like an ear thing. What'd you say, Thomas? Nothing. Because I will slice off your ear. Slice off my ear. Yeah. Figured. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin modern Jesus singing about how he loves you even while you're dying of AIDS. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Like, there's, I don't know what this song is supposed to be. I it's got rent. It's because they want this to be rent. Okay. That's sure. all this is. Fair. Yeah. A lot of ambulances in the background. But, like, isn't there like a sort of a Jesus can cure your disease better than medicine can vibe to this? Oh, of course. Yeah. The, it, it does bring up the problem of modern Jesus not spending his entire time. I'm in the hospital magic healing people. Right. True. True. Yeah. I think they're also trying to be like edgy a little bit or like they're like, we're inclusive. We don't even, I mean, we hate the sinner, but also we want to heal the sinner. Right. Right. Yes. We're, yes. We're being inclusive because we're not being judgy about people having AIDS. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I think you're right though. They're like, look at us. We're so progressive. (laughs) I was just, so overwhelmed by irony at this point because they have this big pause long moment where he goes, blessed are the poor. (laughs) And I just wrote my notes, sang the millionaire from the jumbo stage for which he charged admission (laughs) to the people of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Also, not to be a pedant here, but isn't poor the opposite of blessed? I just feel like... (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so, but he's... And and, uh, his uh, apostles are gathering. It looks like a fucking deadhead parking it's like people left over that didn't realize that the show had already started at the fish concert you know (laughs) oh yeah and so now and now we've got confederate flag guy has changed into american flag shirt yep which i don't know is that progress i'm not (laughs) sure (laughs) this show is not taking a stand on that issue i promise you that (laughs) and then oh oh my favorite is when the guy with the sideways hat comes up yes you guys remember the sideways hat guy he's so embarrassing yes (laughs) i wrote in my notes nobody on this stage doesn't have a teenage child (laughs) (laughs) so true and important plot point i think the undercover cop icon apostle narrator guy is flirting with mary magdalene now they're apparently the two of them are falling in love yeah, so we have to be clear. This guy has three different characters at this point. Yes. Right? He's the prisoner at the beginning. He's also like the narrator throughout. He kind of, I guess, keeps us abreast of what's happening, sort of. Eh. And then, yeah, he's also the undercover icon guy who is like pro-Jesus. Right, but we also see him in his icon outfit later being, and and like it's like, dude, you don't look distinct enough to be doing that to me. No. I don't know. Get a Wario mustache, my man. Something, yeah. <laughs> you literally think he's three different people. Uh, right, until, yes. Until they yeah. do like a really tight shot. And you're like, and oh. Oh, it's oh. that guy. It's generic ass looking fucking avatar I haven't started fucking with looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's every guy who thinks he can trade underage kids beer for whatever drugs they have on them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he's falling in love with Mary Magdalene is the point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Also, so that song wraps up and we have evil Jew come to chat with Jude about maybe recruiting him to his side. Okay. It's written in the Bible why Judas 
betrayed Jesus? Why did they feel the need to retcon this into like Jude was an influencer and he wasn't getting enough Instagram follows? <laughs> Yeah, because that makes it modern, Eli. That's more modern. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's but that's the whole thing is that Jude is following Jesus, you know, so so he can get uh, fucking more followers on his blog, apparently. And evil Jew is like, you know, I can get you a lot of YouTube views if you portray Jesus for me. And he's like, let's talk again in Act Three, man. We'll talk again. <laughs> I can get you trending on Jew talk. All right. I'm listening. I am listening. I can't believe you didn't go with Jew tube there. Oh, see. Oh, Jew tube. I was, I was, I was going to go for circumcised prick talk. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I like that one better. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And then we come across a hilariously sloppy car accident. This is the best. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So we, so we go to, there's a, there's been a car accident and fast rapper guy is going to rap. Me, 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 fast me, 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 guy, me, me, me. That guy <laughs> is going to, he's going to show us his stuff. And at first you're like, oh wow, this guy can fucking rap. And then you're like, oh wait, no, I'm watching this on one and a half speed. I'm sorry. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> I, I literally have at one point in my notes, guys, don't watch on one and a half speed. You'll think they're good at rap. <laughs> That's amazing. Also, I just want to point out that the chorus of this particular rap song about raising his dead child mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is I'm from Harlem. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's I was raised in Harlem. That's right. She's going to be raised. raised from the dead. Right. They're, they're really setting that up. But yes, at, it, the way it starts off is just he stops a couple of times. And he's like, Harlem, represent. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole point, by the way, of this scene is that he's raising this girl mm -hmm. from the dead. Yes. And I guess now I'm realizing that she got hit by a car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it was pretty sloppy. <laughs> I thought that this was just a full scam artist situation where like basically by raising her from the dead, he just like gave her Narcan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, I really feel like that's what this scene was. She was just lying down. Yeah. Like she had just taken a little too much. And then he's like, here you go. We have drugs for that. And then she was like, oh, I, I'm good now. Nice. Yeah. At one point he goes, I'm going to need a minute alone with the body. And I wrote in my notes, oh, sure. But when I ask, I'm not allowed at the funeral of the people's princess anymore. <laughs> right. It was awkward a little. This I, I need to be alone with this dead girl. <laughs> mm. Especially when one of the lines in the rap is just touch my daughter, hero. <laughs> <laughs> what the and can I say, Hillsong Church took that lyric to heart. Yeah, okay. okay. Jesus Christ. I, really reached people with that one. I don't know what that means. There's lucky you. So, <laughs> also, I, I have to point this out, right? So, Jesus heals this girl and she stands up, and there is one single member of the audience that reacts as though she had actually been dead up to that point, right? <laughs> one audience member is like, oh my fucking God, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so so stupid. Somebody call the police. Stop. Relax. Uh, oh, by the way, and, and just in case you didn't catch that fucking double meaning in the raised in a Harlem thing, as we fade away from that song, there's a news anchor that's like, so you could say that she was raised in Harlem, the dead girl, that is. <laughs> it's from the dead, we mean. So We're saying it in white voices, to Oklahoma. Joke. You see how it's <laughs> like, yeah. But the key here is, though, is that after that dead girl raising, Jesus is getting pretty famous and Icon is getting pretty worried. Mm. So the UC, the undercover cop guy, he's going to come and rap at us a little bit more to to sort of fill us in on all of that. And boy, he's going to just do a bang up job. At, <laughs> <laughs> at one point he goes, people flock to his shows. And I wrote in my notes, wait, I'm sorry, is Jesus doing shows? <laughs> <laughs> he does shows. <laughs> He goes at one point from the city to the borough, and I'm like, wait, what do you what do you think that last word means? I, I want to know. Wait, which this is the scene with the with the narrator icon guy again? Yeah, this mm -hmm. is like his 14th song. I just I had to mute him. Yes, I did. He's so bad. He's trying to be Eminem. I think. Yeah, sure. it, ha it had a, an Eminem yeah. vibe to it. This song. Yeah, this is where Kara starts to despair. Her notes at this point read, to be honest, I'm not sure what he was rapping about. To be more honest, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness. All I'm going to say, I listened to it and I didn't know what he was fucking talking about. But I, mm -hmm. I know I noticed things like him pronouncing champion champion to make it rhyme. <laughs> I noticed shit like that. But yeah. Oh, and then we get by far the best moment in the show. We go to Times Square 
where they're going to do the whole feeding the multitudes with just a couple loaves thing and they're going to oh, do yes. it. <laughs> I shit you not with t-shirt guns filled with bread. <laughs> And the projector is showing hot dogs being made. So we're supposed to assume that Jesus is multiplying dirty water dogs. (laughs) I was so confused. There would be an entire chapter of the Bible on food poisoning. (laughs) They're firing wonder bread in giant fucking clouds at their audience. Like, What are they going to do with that shit? They're not going to fucking eat it, are they? (laughs) He literally, I, I literally, my notes read this. Word for word. Okay, say what you will, but take this bread and give it unto the meek, followed by firing a (laughs) t-shirt gun full of bread into the crowd is the peak of the show. Not this episode, this (laughs) podcast. We did it, everybody. You can go, Kara, I'm taking all the websites down. You're free. You can do. (laughs) They do. They show like reverse shots after they shoot the bread into the audience yes. and the audience just looks really confused. Yeah, they're like, why? I don't now I have bread on. It's just crumbs and shit. There'll be ants by the end of the show. Oh, <laughs> and, and this. Oh, yeah. You know, the venue was like, what? Yes. And this, right. is also, <laughs> uh, this is also like the weird Caribbean steel drum vibe song yep. where the whole like song is them going hey yo hey yo hey yo hey yes, yo hey, yes. yo, hey yo. I actually wrote those lyrics down in my notes hey yo hey yo hey yo hey yo hey yo hey yo oh 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 <laughs> so. it's just the whole song I just want to point out I think it was on purpose as a quote unquote joke but Jude's t-shirt gun doesn't work and we get to watch a girl in the audience be sad <laughs> yes yes oh Jude makes me so uncomfortable. All right, so then we we cut to Evil Jew introducing Jude to Icon Cop. Now, Icon has an undercover agent inside Jesus's like inner circle, like the guest that the show has forgotten about. Yeah, the main, the narrator guy. Right, right, exactly. But they're like, oh, finally, a guy on the inside that we can deal with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Jude explains that he can control Jesus. He expl- He's a very, very much a close talker as well. But he's also like borderline jive talking. Yes. Like he's yeah. being so racist. Like every time he talks to anybody of color on the show, he starts to like do like a black guy accent. And yep. it's like really, so really disconcerting. <laughs> yeah. So un- I feel like his t-shirt gun didn't work because someone shot him for the way he talked yes, yes. <laughs> before the show started. So, yeah, but ultimately the evil Jew manages to convince Icon that they need to help out with his Jesus problem. Then we cut to this stupid ass throwaway scene where Jesus is chatting with a few of his disciples and Jesus says, so what do you guys think I am? If you had to tell, if you had to say what I was, what would you guys say I am? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And they say, I think you're the son of God. And the crowd fucking lost it. They ate it the fuck because like the first person's like, well, some people say that you're a lunatic. He's like, uh-huh. And then it's like, some people say you're a liar. He's like, uh-huh. <laughs> Petrov, what do you say I am? Yeah. Crowd fucking ate it up. And, <laughs> and then we had, because they're nearly out of New York things they can think of to the Empire State Building. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? of course. I, I, at this point, I was writing in my notes. Okay, next scene, Katz's Deli? Yeah, right. Yeah. That building from Ghostbusters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, but it's finally time for Petrov to rock the fucking house for once. Oh, and oh, he's yeah. worse than the worst he's of them. So bad. He's the worst one. <laughs> he is, he's trying to be Kid Rock, right? Like, that's his. Goal. Guys, look at my notes. Look at my notes. It says, oh, no, too loud. I can't do this. Eli, I thought you were going to go easy on me this time. <laughs> no. After last time, you owed me. I, this was easy <laughs> no. for us. You could have the Root Canal documentary, Kara. I know. It's my fault. Damn I'm not it. having this fight on air. <laughs> I chose poorly. I chose poorly. <laughs> so, yeah, but then we do an entire song that could just basically be summed up as Jesus is pretty awesome. Petrov and and Mags rock it out for us. And then Jesus sings to us. about. Oh, and then the fucking title cards come up and say act two. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, just to fuck with us. Literally just to fuck with us. Yes. The title card might as well come up and say, come on, Akira, halfway there. (laughs) I know. 
Oh, yeah, like those running apps that are like, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Does my YouTube have zombies getting closer in the background? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. The UC steps in. He's like, I'm still a narrator, by the way. And then, oh, I also want to point this out, too, because because Maggie comes out at this point again. And she has, like, the reverse Hollywood movie thing where her clothes get more and more conservative. Right at this point, she's wearing, like, a, a blazer over her tank top and shit. By the end of it, she'll have, a like, a ankle length dress with a turtleneck or something yeah yeah with like puffy sleeves yeah exactly there's gonna be a glow shot of her tossing her hair back and forth and it's somehow pinned up at the end (laughs) (laughs) this is like the weird song where i feel like i think the lyrics are telling us that this is like a personal responsibility song but then there's these grown women who sound like children singing the refrain yeah this one was weird for me it made me it gave me like squeamishness a little bit i didn't know what it was about either right so like this is like all the backup dancers are singing about how the christians need to fuck the fuck off and get out of there but they sound like like boy like young boy choral singers so it took me a while to realize they were women yeah yeah it was weird they're also doing ballet heckling. Yeah. Right? Like they'll run up in, into Mary's face and like pirouette around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right, like, yeah. yeah. It's a dance off. Yeah. And yeah, but she argues with the backup dancers that, like you said, that they need to take more personal responsibility. And then, and this I only figured out in retrospect, the undercover guy, the icon guy comes and breaks it up. Up until now, Icon has represented the bad guys. And because this guy is so generic looking, I didn't realize he was the same fucking guy. Right. Yeah. But Icon guy comes and he's like, hey, break it up. Stop fucking <laughs> ballet fighting with Jesus. Yeah, because the idea here, right, just to clarify, is that he's like a double agent. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. He says he's undercover at a certain point. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah, I think the idea is he works for Icon. He's undercover trying to help put the kibosh, but actually he loves Jesus. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like, okay, This he's the good guy who, in this world, is viewed as a bad guy, just like Jesus. Right. Okay. Yeah, and he's supposed to be an analog for Paul, but, you know, because he's not exactly an apostle, but... Right, right, right. And, and then we have to, we have to drill in, uh, make sure that you caught that he and Mary Magdalene are love interests... Right. And I can't tell. Yeah, for no reason. Well, so it's either because they don't want you to think that Jesus is a sexual being. And then the assumption would be that Jesus was with with Mags if they didn't give her a love interest or if they, they, they don't want Christians having to deal with the idea of the white girl and the black guy being together. Yeah. For the same reason. But I also I don't even understand what. So if she doesn't have a love interest, she's useless. <laughs> Like yeah, exactly. Her only purpose is to procreate with a man. People just kept raising their hands during rehearsals. I'm sorry, who owns Mary Magdalene? Right. This is very <laughs> confusing. Well, but that's just the thing is that if you don't go out and put a love interest in there, everyone will assume, oh, she's the main characters, right? She belongs <laughs> to the main character. Right. Yeah. That's so fucked up. Yeah. And if you needed proof that Christians don't buy their own story, imagine thinking that you needed to add a love story to the ultimate truth of the universe. <laughs> right? Can we punch it up? You guys punch yeah. it up with a little sex? <laughs> right. This would be like if Darwin was like, but there was one finch that re- had a real big set of tits on her. Let me tell you, and there was a, a dude finch. His name was Reginald the Well Endowed. Stay with me, people. <laughs> he can do some tricks with his beak, let me tell you. So, but yeah, they they're romantic together. They they dance with a Bible and a Book of Mormon between them. Oh my God, this is <laughs> so uncomfortable. She could have bent him over and performed analingus on him <laughs> during this music number, and it would have been less uncomfortable than the series of choreographed Christian side hugs that we watched. <laughs> well, followed by that very steamy forehead kiss, <laughs> forehead kiss. <laughs> Forehead kiss. Christian, guys, I was very sure. Christians do fuck eventually, right? There wouldn't be any if y'all didn't eventually fuck. Oh, I mean, if you were only half watching like I was, you would have full on thought that they were brother and sister. Yeah. It's a brother and sister romance song. Yeah, well, that's probably pretty Christian too, actually, now that I think about it. (laughs) But yeah, and so, and then... Fucking Paul, the 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 good icon guy, Mark Zuckerberg, comes to warn Jesus that shit's about to go down, and he's like, "Yeah, man, 
we were with this with, with this entire act has been about. They beat me up earlier. It's obviously. <laughs> this is also where I wrote my notes like, wow, if they didn't endlessly repeat refrains in every song, this would be a 16 minute movie. Exa yeah, this would oh be like God. this would fit into those ads that you can skip at the beginning of YouTube <laughs> yes. videos. Oh, yeah, this was a weird, uncomfortable song, too. I mean, they're all terrible and uncomfortable, so they're just trying to out uncomfortable each other. Yeah. Uh -huh. But this is the song where the very, very white man like fronts. To black Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yep. He's like rap battling with yes. black Jesus and black Jesus is like just shaking his head the whole time. He's just like, ah, oh, man. He's doing he's... a lot of like hold the mic in one hand and wiggle, push the other hand forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the other. <laughs> what? 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 Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Uh, and then in a fucking admission that they've completely run out of New York landmarks, we just cut to Icon HQ <laughs> so that Jude can sing about his upcoming betrayal. Yep. <laughs> now this is the first time like Jude has sung as part of other people's songs but this is the first time Jude has to carry a song and I feel like he's there to make everyone else to, to, to make you like appreciate Mary Magdalene singing <laughs> right there is a moment where he goes and I'm going to do my best not to exaggerate or hurt the listeners ears wow <laughs> in the middle of the song I checked my baby monitor <laughs> oh yeah this is the song where while he's singing his tongue is sticking out yes. I don't know how he does that and he's singing into a pocket mirror yeah like he's holding a pocket mirror up looking into it singing with his tongue sticking out and you know he had to practice really hard to pronounce coup de gras like he says coup de gras <laughs> at one point <laughs> And you can see him like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> and there was there were so many jump cuts of this scene. Again, I, I hate to keep going back to my narrative of battling my iPad, but one of the things the app does is it calls your emergency contact oh, if you get too many because they think you're having a seizure and it's like, oh shit, you're on the ground eating your own tongue. So my iPad attempted to tell on me to my wife at this point. It's like, don't worry, we're getting you help. I was yeah they were they, it was a it was a cut every 15th of a second at this point and I wrote in my notes like I can't understand what the fuck he's saying so I can only comment on peripheral shit like the lighting now <laughs> you know I'm sure it's yeah. about betraying Jesus or something but like Kara said he's got his tongue sticking out while he's singing <laughs> And then, like, the weird pocket mirror kind of just looks like a ping pong paddle. <laughs> like, I don't know what yeah. the point of this prop is. So he's just dancing around the stage, like, whipping it around. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, it's it's not as much fun as dancing around stage, whipping it around makes it sound. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, we clearly all need a minute to recover from those speed cuts. So we're going to pause for another break here. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Who wants this to exist? <laughs> Why are those people allowed to vote? Will this movie run so long that they have to tack the crucifixion and resurrection on real quick at the end, like they're trying to finish a poorly thought out letter before they run out of page? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We return for the atonal conclusion of A Hero. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And it turned out to be super helpful. I told you. Hey, guys, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, Kara actually convinced me to go to therapy. She did. Why? Wait, well, what's wrong with you? Nothing has to be wrong with you to go to therapy. Therapy is just a great way to talk about the stress of everyday life with a neutral third party. And they didn't like wrap you in a straitjacket and shock your brain or. No, they huh. didn't do either of those things. Weird. That, that, that sounds good, but it seems hard to get out there and find a therapist. Well, that's why there's better help. What's better help? BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, you can even message your therapist on the app so you can get thoughtful replies on the go. Wow, that sounds super useful. It is. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. So what do you say, Noah? Going to give it a try? I sure will. I mean, you know, if I ever find myself with any mental or emotional problems, that is. Oh, yeah. If that happens. Sure. Was that... 
You screaming in the kitchen earlier? I threw the stove out the window. Got it. Sure. sure, sure. Kept yeah. sticking. Things would be mm. Mm. reasonable. <laughs> Help! Oh, won't the great holy man and healer of our city help me? Hello, my child. What seems to be the problem? My older brother was hit by a car and is dead. Can you raise him? Indeed, I can. Mm. Uh, is that necessary? The laying on of hands? Yes, my child. It is very necessary. Right. No, no. It's just that those are his um butt cheeks. Can you do like his shoulders or maybe his lower back? No, no, my child. My hands must rest here. <sighs> Damn it. What, what's the matter? Oh, the contact isn't strong enough. I must get under his robe. Uh, under the robe? Yes. If we want this man to live, we must place my hands directly on his butt cheeks. Okay, I guess. Did someone call for the healer? It is... Uh, God damn it, Phil. Oh, I gotta go. Wait, you're the healer? Yes. Yes, hi. I'm, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. So that guy was... Just a butt cheek pervert. <sighs> Got it. So you want me to raise your brother from the dead or... Uh... Honestly, I don't think he'd want you to at this point. No, that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And apparently while we were doing the skits, they remembered another NYC landmark. So we're going to rejoin the action at Yankee Stadium. Oh, yeah. So that Jesus can give the sermon on the mound. Uh (laughs) They were so proud of themselves when they came up with that one. Actually, I'm kidding. I'm giving them too much credit. The the sermon on the mound thing was in the Empire State's building. They did not think of that. They actually (laughs) didn't. Yeah, damn. They say that he's doing the seventh inning stretch, and I really want to hear that announcement. Like, all right, everybody. (laughs) Get on your feet for the Son of God, and don't forget next Friday is free bat day. Right, and if you can't get on your feet, be sure to work your way to the very front. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus. So the apostles all come on stage, hype man and for Jesus. I also have to throw out here that this is where I made a horrifying discovery. One of the disciples is wearing a shirt that I own. Oh, oh no. Yeah, you really got upset by mm-hmm. this. Oh, yep. no. My orange exclamation point shirt, which I have worn many times, many places, often publicly, is a uh, merch from Hero oh, Rock no. Musical. It's the Jesus shirt. It's the main guy shirt. Mm-hmm. That you were wearing. Oh, Where wow. did you buy it? I got it for free. I buy, get things for free. <laughs> so, I love free shirts. <laughs> I keep outfatting my other shirts, Kara. <laughs> What are you going to do with it now? I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably outfat it again because it's a shirt I own. Right. Yeah. So I love there's this great moment. too. So the, all the apostles come out and hype man him. And then Jesus has to enter stage. But the way it's supposed to work, he's going to go through the audience. Right. He's coming in through the back oh, yeah. and he's going to come in through the audience. The audience is going to be all excited. But the audience is not particularly excited. And it's. Christian audience in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they don't really want to touch a black guy, you know, whatever. So there's like, they have to kind of cajole the audience into like getting excited and reaching out for him. They're like, no, come on. It's like, like imagine he's Jesus. So <laughs> many of them go for a handshake. So many. Of them. <laughs> there are so many people in this crowd who are like, hello, Jesus. Nice to, nice to meet you. I also couldn't tell. Did you notice that Jesus had this big dude behind him? Was he a character or was he an actual bouncer? I think he was an actual bouncer because they were so convinced that people were going to mob him because yeah. of his celebrity. Yes. Right. It was so weird. <laughs> but instead, he walks lonely down through the <laughs> yes, with audience. Yes, nothing to do except go, you guys want to touch him? You can reach out and touch him. It'll, be, yeah. look, it'll look better for the cameras if you reach Like out. actual cannibal <laughs> Shia LaBeouf just alone in the theater. <laughs> Oh, and at this point, the song is just Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yes. And I Googled what does Hosanna mean because I hear this often and I'm like, where did this word come from? What does it actually mean? And it autofilled in my Google to what does Hosanna mean and why is it so powerful? (laughs) What? No. No. I got to try that. (laughs) So and powerful, why is, oh my God, God it's right Kate, there. Oh, it Noah got oh, it too. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's so okay. Fun fact. Any guesses on how many na, na, na Hosannas they do in this song? Oh, I'm going to say 101. <laughs> it's 12. Jesus it is Christ. 12 
na 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 hosanna <laughs> na, and like genuinely i could not do it as a bit on our comedy podcast because no, it would go way too long because by t- by time nine no it'd be like we get the bit man it's not fun <laughs> stop it oh and why do they keep calling him here i mean here's like the callback i guess to the title of the musical is his name Jesus or is it Hero? It's Hero because they don't want it would be sacrilegious to be calling him Jesus through the whole thing. I think. Oh, so we never actually call him Jesus. I don't think so. No, we, he's he's gotcha. Hero. Gotcha. So Hero is the euphemism for Jesus. Right. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So and then that song ends. Judas comes up and he's just like, "Hey, man, Jesus, um, if you want, like, I can get you trending on Instagram." Uh, <laughs> I hate to like part the curtain here, but anyone who's ever wanted to know what it's like when I come to know with my stupid ideas, <laughs> it's this conversation. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me you're planning, Eli? Is someone yeah. coming for me? There's just no one ever interested in getting you crucified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Judas is very upset that that Jesus won't help him like, you know with a little razzle dazzle like i guess like judas wants to put on a big tour and make millionaires out of him <laughs> and of course the jesus character stops and he goes no no no! i came to give my life for everyone and then the crowd goes nuts again oh they were so <laughs> fucking into it <laughs> <laughs> so we, we head back over to the synagogue for the just irony can only go downhill from this moment right they do a song in the middle of this gazillion dollar bullshit musical about how Jesus is too commercialized these days. Yes! Okay. I literally wrote, like, how is it that every god-awful movie has these super ironic moments where you're like, they get it, right? Like, yes! they get it, yes! but then they don't get it. No, like, they don't. Like, they use overt symbolism and words to paint a picture of organized religion as a monetary scam, and they don't even see that they're doing it. No, they it. do not. No, they do not. <laughs> they're doing it right in front of, like, to the people who paid for front row seats. To the show. They are within a hundred paces of their own merch table. Yes. <laughs> it's fucking insane. And the lyrics reflect that, by the way. They're like, it's it's that like blind. Have you ever seen one of those CNN interviews where they gather up a bunch of slack jawed Trump supporters and they're like, all right, goofus and galant. Here's proof that the sky is blue. What do you think? And they're just like, <laughs> that's the lyrics of this song. It's just like, Jesus flipped the tables because he didn't like the direction that table was facing. <laughs> he was Hosanna. losing that monopoly. <laughs> Shit. Why did we use all the na 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 Hosannas on the list? <laughs> and also, by the way, so they set up that there's going to be like a big rap battle here between Jesus and the Pharisees, right? Between Jesus and the evil Jew guy. But then they don't make with, they don't actually do it, right? They like throw down the gauntlet and Jesus is like, oh, would you like me to pick that gauntlet up for you? You seem to have dropped it. (laughs) Now, Noah, I I hate to disagree with you on air, but I think this is a very realistic Jewish fight, yelling at each other and shouting, who do you think you are back and forth? (laughs) So, I don't know what temples you've been. All right, at. no, I just I, I I wasn't getting the cultural context. You're right, Eli. I apologize. So yeah, and then the Paul character, Mark Zuckerberg, wraps his way in to tell us that we're very excited and we've been having a great time so far. <laughs> He's like, I know this has been a lot to take in, you know. And I'm just like, it's not though, man. It's just it's just you guys are going we real got it, slow. Man. It's, it's literally the most told story. <laughs> This is also where they have chess pieces behind him. Yeah. And this is when I realize that there are still 40 minutes left on the stage. Uh, show. God. <laughs> so it's time for the Last Supper, right? We start, they're all frozen, like the painting. Now, they don't do this well, right? They don't actually recreate the painting or anything. No. They do just, it so bad. Yeah. They did the Mary John swap from the fucking Da Vinci Code. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they put Judas in the place where idiots think is Judas because Simon is mad about the wine. Yep. <laughs> it's, yep. It is genuinely all the misunderstanding things you can have about The Last Supper, the painting recreated of in this giant rock musical about the life of Jesus. And then I'm not sure if I made this up or if this actually happened, but I'm pretty sure that so they're trying to be frozen. And then when they break the freeze, somebody goes, barbecue's ready. Yes. Yep. 
<laughs> that did happen. Okay, just and the audience like laughed. They're like, "Oh, that must have been a joke. I didn't get that it." Was clever. So, I bet it was funny. Well, yeah, and so they sing this song. The lyrics of this song are "party, party, party, party." And it, it seems to be a song about putting one's hand in the air as though one did not care. Mm. Oh, yeah. With with some me, 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 me. Yeah, that's in. the whole fucking <laughs> yeah. song. They just do that for so long. <laughs> OK, but I want to talk about the dance off thing at the very end. Yeah. Well, hey, the break dancers legit good. Yes. OK, but here's the problem. They did it in reverse order. They have a guy who can do flippy flips. <laughs> But then the rest of the guys can absolutely not do something more impressive than flippy flips. Nope. <laughs> nope. The first guy ruins it for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Then the next guy gets up and he's like, I'm sitting on my crisscross applesauce. And they're like, dude, who fucking cares? <laughs> yeah. No, that, honestly, that guy's break dancing. I had in my notes as the only entertaining thing that ever happened on purpose in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the whole time everybody's having so much fun. <laughs> Judas. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like sitting at the table like me. Me. Yes. <laughs> Silently bitchy Judas, I want in every Christian movie from now on ever. I just I want at least one person sitting there all mopey and not enjoying this shit in every big dance number. I want Heath's analog in the dance number, right? Just somebody sitting there going, I didn't just nobody even said that there was gonna be dancing at this nobody shit. Nobody asked. Me. <laughs> so they get done singing about how it's time to get the party started an hour and a half into their fucking show <laughs> and then it resolves they're like oh fuck this is the last supper though we really have to tone this back down so you guys want to do the last supper scene again but solemnly yes let, let's do it solemnly and let's make sure we have a comically large loaf of bread to really <laughs> it's so fucking funny it is huge it's so weird the whole blood of Christ and body of Christ. I mean, every time it, I just, I feel so weird about it. I guess it's like old hat to you guys, but like, no, it's never stops being creepy though. Yeah. yeah. And luckily for us, we get passive aggressive, bitchy Judas yes. literally going like yucky during the last fucking supper. He's like, take <laughs> this blood. Ew, blood. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jude, I can hear you. I'm the son of God. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> he literally, at this point, Judas interrupting so often, he sends him away to go betray him. He's like, Hey man, don't you gotta go sell me out to the Romans or something? Yes. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I just want to let you know that I know that you're going to betray me and I wish you'd go the fuck ahead and do it. <laughs> So then the title card comes up and it says Icon HQ Devlin's office. And I'm like, oh, you think I know who Devlin is? That's cute. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, yeah. Who's Devlin? Yeah. And then but this is Judas heading back to the Icon HQ to sing stupidly about betrayal some more. Yeah. The screen behind him at this point is the bonus stage from Super Mario Brothers 3 where you have to line up the faces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> click, click, click. That's the rhythm. Just click, click, click. And you'll get it every time, guys. <laughs> yeah. Not sure why he ended his song with a ghost trying to sing a Nine Inch Nails song that doesn't know the words <laughs> what to. What the fuck? It was so bad. So, yeah, he's, he puts this little screamy outro thing at the end of his song, and it feels like one of those things that's like, it was improvised, he regretted it right away, but he kept trying to lean into it to try to make it work like he could play through the fuck up somehow. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I literally, no lie, I fast-forwarded through the song, but then I stopped fast-forwarding too soon. Yeah. And I got him mid <laughs> and you squealing heard like a dying yeah. cat. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> but I didn't need to listen to the song because I know it was about betrayal because they wrote the word betrayal yes. on the screen behind him. I can only imagine that, like, Mary came out and sung a song and has this incredible hip hop voice. And Jude was like, well, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and three very tearful arguments later where he kept pointing at her and saying, you let her do it. <laughs> this is what they agreed on letting him do. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. And so then we head to Central Park. Uh, they did know another one for a little <laughs> rhythmic persecution and creepy masks. Yeah. Oh, the creepy masks. I kind of liked them. Yeah. Okay. This is supposed to be the garden at Gilgamesh where Jesus calls Baxies, right? Sure. Oh. Okay. Because he's like, it's so hard to be me and I'm fighting <laughs> Satan. Right. 
And this is where we realize that Satan is a BDSM couple ready for the most hardcore game of chicken you've ever played. <laughs> yeah, all, all I know about this scene is that there's a bunch of white people beating the shit out of black guy Jesus and they tie a literal rope around his neck. Yes, yep, that happens. they have so little sensitivity about this. And then, so here's the thing too, like this is a live stage performance and what they want is to have a like four people have ropes around his neck and then walk around him like a maypole. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> like, but what? it's really hard to do that on stage without killing that man without strangling a newsboy. Yeah. Right. Yes, exactly. And so they're like moving so gingerly and they stop every few steps. You go, OK, you're, you're good. You're good. And like good. Right. But like, <laughs> and he's singing. So every time they mess up, we hear it. Right. Yes. He'd be like, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, that really hurt. Okay, I'm mad at you. Yeah. I'll talk to you after the show. <laughs> so uncomfortable. I mean, Eli, like you wrote, hey guys, what's literally the only, only thing, thing we, we can't, can't do to do our to black, black Jesus? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Lynching montage. Lynching montage, yeah. What? This is how they won the part of the audience back that was mad about the black <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. They were like, Satan, I told you, honey, this is why this show's allowed in Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then Jesus talks about how sometimes it's hard to get crucified for the sins of mankind. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. He oozes a lot here. It's just a lot of ooing. Yeah. Yes, yes. He oozes at us for quite a while. They don't write that many lyrics in this musical. <laughs> and I think the point of this song was like, look, sometimes you got to hate gay people and trans people and people will be mad at you for that. Yes. But yeah, oh. this is also this was a real interesting moment for me because Eli and I were watching this at a ba basically the same time. And so Eli messaged me and he's like, hey, man, how many X speed am I allowed to watch this on and still say I watched the movie? <laughs> right. And I, I messaged him back like, dude, I know shit literally just wrote in my notes. I could watch this at four times speed and miss nothing. <laughs> That's the note I had literally written right before he messaged that. Yeah, the only thing you would miss is that gross kissing sound. Ooh, yeah. the double smooch. It was the double smooch, like the European double smooch, because it was like, who was it? Do you remember who he was Judas, kissing? Judas, Judas. Oh, it was Judas. But it was literally like, Mwah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, why? Why did you make noise when you did it? You didn't have to do that. So everyone in the audience with misophonia like puked a little yeah how many rehearsals did it take for Judas not to say no homo at the end of that kiss <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> no homo oh Jesus, <laughs> Jesus no homo <laughs> well I think there's a Tulsa City ordinance actually that required him to say that but yeah <laughs> and again just credit, shout out to my favorite character in the bible <laughs> yes Petrov is just in the back fucking kicking asses <laughs> They come to arrest Jesus and Petrov's like, I will kill a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Biblically accurate. Yep. Oh, God. God the, damn it. I, this movie is so slow and boring. I was like, oh, God, they're just now arresting Jesus. Wasn't that yeah, what the lynching yeah. was? Was that mm -hmm. not? Oh, no, that was the pre that was the pre arrest lynching. I guess. You don't remember yeah. that from the Bible. And then, so we head back to Icon HQ for them to put Jesus on trial. Now, this is where we're going to meet our Pontius Pilate character, who is for some reason in a wheelchair and has an eye patch. It's literally Claw from Inspector Gadget. Oh my God, it is! <laughs> oh yeah, I wrote you guys. What are we watching? <laughs> Have you calculated how much of your life you've spent doing this? Like how many actual life hours you have dedicated? To I this? actually did. I, I actually did care for a speech that I recently gave at an atheist convention, and it's real close to forty days and forty nights. And so we're not there yet. <laughs> it's super, no. super close. Take this cup from me. So, <laughs> by the way, pin in wheelchair guy because he is going to have the best worst bow, which is oh what my I God, went with. Yes. <laughs> so yes, but eye patch guy is not sold on Jesus being evil though. Like Pontius Pilate, he's like, nah, this seems like a Jew problem. You guys take care of it. Wait, who is he? By the way, who is the guy in the wheelchair with an eye patch? Is he his lawyer? Uh, no, he's like the head of Icon or, or the, like the regional manager or oh. assistant to the regional manager of Icon or whatever. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what was going on in this scene. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is that they assume like 
they assume that you don't know anything at all about anything except Christianity and that you know a lot about Christianity, right? So you're supposed to walk into this going, okay, Pontius Pilate, gotcha. Got uh, it, yeah. The yeah. minute he said wash his hands, the audience was like, oh, okay. Right, oh. yep. Yep. Yeah. Also, by the way, the graphic in the back is this spinny skull thing with lightning in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said they got out the Doom graphics for this one. Yeah, no, it's the graphical equivalent of a Glory Hammer song. Like nine people love that joke. Okay, so, <laughs> but good icon guy comes up and he goes like, hey, Jesus, they're going to try to kill you. And Jesus is like, dude, the, the chorus of this song is kill the hero. I know I'm right fucking here. Oh, and then they get full on seizure happy again. I Again, this is where I turned off sea safe. My notes are just, I'm flying without sea safe, guys. <laughs> But this also felt like the most rock opera moment of the whole musical was where they're beating him up. Yeah. And there's like Bohemian Rhapsody faces on the big projectors in the background. Yeah. This is like, like big kind of stark faces singing along. And and honestly, and this was a low bar to clear, it was also the best song, right? Oh, yeah. that, maybe that's also why I felt that way. I was like, okay, this feels like a rock opera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they had one scene at one hour and 47 minutes and let's face it the spinny lightning skull was pretty fucking cool i mean you know let's, let's <laughs> sell it short but yeah but but basically the the end result here is he's like i won't kill jesus but i won't say anything if you guys kill him right right so then we go back outside the icon hq it literally says that on the fucking title card it just says <laughs> outside icon hq i'm like really <laughs> yeah, guys yeah, 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 yeah. but that's they still want to kill jesus so they're gonna right mm -hmm, yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. And Jesus gets crucified kind of off screen at this point. In the silliest way. Oh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah, we'll get to it post-crucifixion. Right. So just so you know, but first we have to cut back to Judas with a gun. Now, he's thinking about suicide. He's going to cry sing to us and show us just how Anne Hathaway he isn't. Oh, God. First of all, he has the largest, fakest looking gun possible. Oh, it's Eddie Valiant would be like, dude, that's a little silly. Actually, you look silly with that. And he's rubbing it all over <laughs> his bald head. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, I want it so badly to go off and deafen him in one ear. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's mope singing on yes! top of the speakers. Yep. Like, it's so rock and roll. <laughs> oh, it's, and, it, and he's still doing the tongue out sneer sing thing, but oh. he's trying to do it quietly and sadly. You can't even hear his ass. Oh, it's so bad. And then it blacks out. We get this comically exaggerated gunshot sound. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, by the way, Jesus has been crucified. See him up on the cross? They have leaned him on a <laughs> cross street sign. Yes. 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 It's not a crucifix. It's like. Corner of Delancey and Mickelson, and they just sort of <laughs> hucked him up there. And you can tell that it's hurting his arms because yes. the signs are sharp. Because Jesus will not stop wiggling and being like, owie, owie, owie. Yep. yep. <laughs> Gucci, can't get comfy. Ah. Uh, so, yeah, but then, so he gets crucified, and then Mags is going to lead his followers in a fucking reprise. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, the scene. Well, but so th scene. now this is also, though, I will say, this is the one spot where they really let the Virgin Mary actor sing right they let the best singer really go off in this moment so that it, you know wait virgin mary actress oh you mean like his mom yeah the mom yeah, yeah. oh yeah. not mad kara i don't know if you are aware of this but the virgin mary was actually jesus's mom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> just just making sure oh no no <laughs> well, i'm not I'm talking about Mags, all these no. notes about about mary magdalene and i'm thinking like no no she could not sing no she no was very bad <laughs> yeah no the mom like went the mom the fuck oh yeah she's amazing this point. yeah yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, and then the good icon guy gets arrested. So it makes sense that he was in that cage earlier. He's like, it's all oh. coming together. Yeah. Oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> and then we get the worst possible version of the empty tomb. Oh, it's so stupid. Yes. They go. They're like, oh, and it, 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 it would come up. It's Easter Sunday and we're at the city morgue. Yes. Yeah. She shows up at the morgue and she's like, so where's Jesus's body? And they're like, why the fuck would you be here for that? Yeah. That makes no sense. <laughs> but but who tells her Jesus is gone? J Jesus. 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 <laughs> yeah, While he's, mopping. Yep. He's he's a janitor now and he's wearing his morgue beanie. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
And it says on the sign behind them, three days later, in case you were wondering. Yes, right, yeah. Uh-huh. He also thumbs up the audience at this point. Yep. <laughs> like, he's like, it's really me. It's, it's, it's <laughs> wink, me, wink. Jesus, I got away. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. okay, everybody. And I Clap love, for Tinkerbell. She goes back to all of her friends and she goes, the tomb is empty. And they all are like, oh, he must have been resurrected. Not like, did somebody steal his body? <laughs> nope. It's, it's even worse than that. She says, our hero's tomb is empty. I've been inside. I'm like, it was a morgue. Yeah. <laughs> you little, you she, crawled into that little refrigerator drawer looking for it. What the <laughs> fuck are you even talking about, you nut? Oh. And then the song is, our savior is gone. He's not here. Yes. And I'm like, no, but he is. He's mopping the floor in the morgue. The chorus <laughs> is, he's not here. And it took... All the willpower I possess not to write a parody of this song about Heath Enright. I will tell you, it's all <laughs> my willpower. But like the whole refrain at the end of your song about your savior is about him not being present. It's amazing <laughs> that the irony of that does just entirely escapes them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole everybody's singing like we need Jesus, but he ain't nowhere to be found. <laughs> T-shirt cannon. <laughs> Brett. And then we uh we catch back up with our with our narrator. He's in the cell from the beginning. The spotlight kicks in before the cameraman wakes up. <laughs> there was a great <laughs> jarring. Oh fuck, I'm supposed to be stage left. Oh, oh. Duh. I'm here. It's okay. <laughs> and he sings a song about anyway, that was our rock opera. Re- genuinely. <laughs> yeah. But fully in that like I'm not white. I'm not white voice. Yeah, yes, right. he's so uncomfortable. The final song really leans on the free at last lyrics here. <laughs> and oh I'm like, my God. Mm, I feel like you don't have your super white, white guy lead off the free at last yeah, number. Yeah, you can't sing a slave spiritual here. It's not just because there's three black people in your musical does not make it okay. Like, nope. Everything about this is gross. Yeah. Yeah, no, but he sings a song about how he may be in prison, but boy, is he free. And then we get the bows, right? Everybody comes out for their bows, which I normally wouldn't even bother to mention. But as Eli said, we get a really bad one in here. Okay. Oh, something else happens? Because yeah. I just I just wrote the curtain call is interminable. I just <laughs> kind of like tuned out completely at this point. Wheelchair pirate, Claw <laughs> from Inspector Gadget, when he comes out for his bow, comes out in his wheelchair. And I was like, oh, they actually used a person who's a wheelchair. Yeah. No, he leaps out of his chair like, surprise, I'm not in a wheelchair. I've been healed by Jesus. Yes. Oh, and then <laughs> to make it worse, to make it worse, Jewish guy who bows next takes off his Jew hat and is like, surprise, I'm not Jewish. Yes. <laughs> Also, and I have to mention this, this because it's so beautiful. Big me, 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 me guy, the, the guy in the Yankees jersey. Uh huh. He gets left hanging on his closing high five. He sure does. Every <laughs> single person just walks by him, going like, "Oh, you're Mexican or something." Come no, on, man, gross. <laughs> and because and and so he ends up picking up the main character at the end and like walking around with him, like that's why my arm was in the air. Like my cat just fell off the table or something it's just it's yeah i amazing <laughs> that last little moment to death so all right well that's the end of it i guess the question at the heart of the movie is you know what if the jesus myth happened in the modern day a plot that we've only seen 103 times before so my closing question for you is what did they get the wrongest about if the jesus myth happened today well i'm pretty sure it just wouldn't have happened like that. Like, dude would probably have a reality show, not a low rent, <laughs> rent situation. Yeah. I think they got wrong how long it takes the NYPD to kill a black guy. This, <laughs> this is two hours? That's crazy. <laughs> True. True. Come on. Right? Read Blink. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Ah Hero, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure ourselves back into this trap next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. In a world where Christianity is now illegal, this is the actual blurb. Oh, nice. In a world where Christianity is now illegal, a young street racer learns of his abusive, alcoholic father's past and eventual conversion. We'll be watching 2019's Buying Time. Wow, that sounds terrible. Amazing, (laughs) yes. 
See? So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 344 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for helping us out and a reminder to check the show notes for links to her other stuff. And of course, an equally huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robertson, Nick Sierra of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Nick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil I. Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The cast did the whole thing all over again the next day, and this time, Judas brought a real gun. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> The male leads of this show went on to see their kids every other weekend. <laughs> In a hero's defense, the Jews continued to dress like that for 2,000 more years. <laughs> they did, though. <laughs> My my seconds ran long there. The um thing had the same caster hadn't started in time, and I just I went ahead. I just charged ahead. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> this is why Marsh talks shit about you when you're. I know, here. I know, <laughs> I know. And then I hear about it in the outtakes. It's rough. <laughs> he forgets I'm editing it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Ready to elevate your fall fashion. Target's new limited-time-only fall designer collection with designers Kika Vargas, Laline, and Sergio Hudson isn't just about great style for all. It's also all about great styling. With so many ways to style them and wear them, the collection's versatile designer pieces are meant to mix and match and become new staples in your wardrobe. Get a sneak peek of the new looks by exploring the fall designer collection now on Target.com before it drops October 9th. The dedicated men and women